Hello, and welcome to this week's Movie Math, where Tom Holland and his agent played chicken with video game adaptations and won! And that was like a pretty even match, considering how poorly Tom Holland has done at the box office outside of the Spider-Man franchise. Uh, you know, even match with very poor video game adaptations out of Hollywood. But that's right, even though Amy Pascal wants to make another Tom Holland Spider-Man trilogy, he ain't signed yet. But considering how bad his box office track record is outside of Spider-Man, as I just said, it was a real leap of faith for Tom Holland and his team not to close a deal before Uncharted opened. You know, you have to decide if you want to try and make a deal based on the hype for a movie or the reality of the movie. And often in Hollywood, the hype is, be the hype is better than the reality. But in this case, you know, I can't believe how well it turned out, considering this was a movie starring Tom Holland, who again, not, had not done well outside of Spider-Man, Mark Wahlberg, no box office prince himself these days, and some controversy with people bringing up his, uh, his past on social media, and yet another video game adaptation, the one genre that Hollywood just can't seem to get right. With fans of this game going into the weekend saying, yeah, you can't get it right, you still can't get it right, because this is not my Nathan Drake and Sully. Well, there's somebody's Nathan Drake and Sully, because Uncharted isn't just a pandemic success, but a success period, as one of the top 10 President's Day weekends of all time. Of all time! With solid audience scores, I mean, they're not incredible, but they're solid, and solid demos. The kind of numbers that you can move forward with, that Sony can move forward with. Uh, the franchise, uh, speaking of moving forward, I think the franchise does have room for improvement based on these numbers when it comes to pulling in women, which is surprising because the assumption had been, I think, that the majority of Holland's franchise is women, and yet, they didn't, a lot of them did not show up for this movie. Fascinating and a pleasant surprise for Tom Holland again and his agent. As I said in my review, I feel that the female roles in Uncharted were weak, but at least Taddy Gabriel did the best she could with what she was given. But this can be easily fixed for the second installment with a strong female villain. Are there any in Uncharted? I think it's pretty clear that this is very different from the games at this point. But a strong female villain, which can now be played by a name actress, now that the franchise has a proven success factor, I think they'll be able to recruit more big name talent going forward. Sure, it's no Black Panther, Deadpool, or Sonic for President's Day weekend, but it beat out other recent films in the, uh, for the frame, like the first Kingsman. Remember when Taron Egerton was supposed to be a big star? Unfortunately, did that, that, unfortunately, that did not materialize, which is too bad. He's actually kind of similar to Tom Holland, so it would seem that Tom Holland has won out, thanks to, I think, a huge assist from the Spider-Man franchise. And so you know what that means? Tom Holland, movie star. I mean, it's not exactly a done deal with just two movies, and obviously Uncharted benefited tremendously from riding on the coattails of Spider-Man No Way Home, but Tom Holland, movie star, is true right now. And you can bet that his agent will be saying that all over town to get him not only more money for this upcoming Spider-Man trilogy, but other projects. We're gonna talk about Tom Holland's career in just a moment, but he's got a pretty free dance card. Oh, we're gonna talk about Fred Astaire. Uh, so I think that his agent, don't be surprised if in the next couple of days or weeks, you see Tom Holland sign up for a lot of projects based on this one-two punch, because now he's in a position to get paid. And I'm sure that Amy Pascal is thrilled that she at least locked him down for her Fred Astaire uh, biography. She didn't lock him down for Spidey, but she locked him down for Astaire. Now a note of caution. Lily James has knocked it out of the park as Pamela Anderson, but Anderson's strong opposition to the miniseries has really killed that show's momentum and any attention for James's performance, with Anderson's fans review bombing the show on multiple sites. And when it was announced that Tom Holland will play Fred Astaire in a movie, right away many people on social media responded that that was against Astaire's wishes. In fact, Fred Astaire had said, put it in his will that a movie should never be made about his life because he felt it would definitely get things wrong and misrepresent him. So no matter how magical Tom Holland with his dance background, which I think really has paid off for him in the action genre, but you know, I think he wants to just straight up dance. No matter how magical he might be as Fred Astaire, uh, interesting that you know Chris Evans has his Gene Kelly project coming along at the same time. But no matter how magical Tom Holland might be in the role, going against Astaire's wishes might be an insurmountable public relations obstacle. 
I, I mean, everything's going so well, Tommy, baby. Why dance right into disaster? And with this one-two punch at the box office, Spider-Man No Way Home, by the way, has overtaken Avatar officially at the domestic box office to become, you know, including all the re-releases of Avatar, to become the number three film of all time, again, on the, bo uh, the domestic box office chart. That's incredible. It's, it's done. Spider-Man No Way Home is done climbing the charts at number three domestic and number six worldwide all time. That's incredible. Tom Holland uh, have, will have plenty of other projects to choose from going forward, at least now for a window of time, as his agent will be able to say he's a very rare thing in Hollywood these days, not just a new star, but a new male star. That is very exciting for Tinseltown. Because star, I know a lot of you are against movie stars, but stars, you know, that trust that the audience has that the project will be good that they're in is important because you can see it helped Uncharted. And his schedule, as I said, is wide open with just his Fred Astaire movie for Pascal and a TV series for Apple TV, which he is executive producing about the first person acquitted of a crime because of multiple personality disorder. Yes, clearly, because he's proven he's, al he's already proven he's an action star, Holland is eager to prove that he's also an actor. But if you saw him in his breakout role, The Impossible, you'd know that he's a very good actor already. He's an incredible actor. I don't know why that hasn't come through yet. I think it does in his Spider-Man work, but he's not been picking good projects outside of that. Uh, I think he's wanted to have been like a cool action star up until now, or like a cool hot movie star, and he just simply isn't. So I think that the projects that he's choosing now are a little bit better. So I can see his career beginning to take shape, right? He's got Spider-Man and now Uncharted, two franchises, both for Sony, where he can just keep making those for a pretty penny. Uh, he's very early on in his career, so they can get a lot of movies out of him. And then do challenging roles, you know, more challenging roles in between. That is a very sweet career setup. That is the ideal career setup a franchise or two to anchor your career and then do smaller, smaller projects on the side. Another person who deserves accolades is director Ruben Fleischer, who has once again really come through for Sony. He's able to deliver big crowd pleasers for the studio, and he has now built them three franchises. On that note, he's been dropping not so subtle hints on the press tour for Uncharted that he would really like to do a Zombieland spinoff next, focusing on Madison. And considering how good Zoe Deutsch was in that role, that seems like a no-brainer. Uh, don't be surprised if he gets his wish as a thank you for delivering for Sony once again. Also, will Sony keep him around for the sequel this time, unlike they did with Ven Venom 2? Hopefully they learned their lesson there. It was a mistake to get rid of Fleischer for the sequel. Now, someone who was once a star, but who has faded a bit, is Channing Tatum. He was on top of the world! But then, a combination of movies that just didn't click with audiences. And then, of course, he unfortunately had a divorce, and I think that all sidetracked him. It was just a perfect storm. But Tatum is ready for a comeback this year, and his agent has done an excellent job positioning him for just that. His big movie is The Lost City opposite Sandra Bullock, a movie tailor-made for both of them. That's just perfect for both. But first up, he has Dog, which has excellent audience scores. Excellent! And a very good, well, very solid opening weekend. The movie skewed slightly female and older, which I think is interesting. Uh, but this is just the start of Dog's journey, as I suspect it will explode on digital, especially after such a strong opening like this and strong audience scores to catch people's attention and say, hey, maybe we should watch Dog. Shading Tatum might never be Gambit. Oh, so sad. His ideas were horrible. I'm glad that never happened. But he just might be a movie star once more. I'm rooting for the guy. He has like a Magic Mike 3 coming up exclusively, exclusively for HBO Max. I don't know. That seems a little bit more like what he was doing that didn't quite work to, uh, the last couple of years. But at least he's consistent in getting things going. We'll see how The Lost City does. As for the rest of the top 10, both of last week's new movies fell a little over 50% in their second weekends, which is not great, but it's better than the 60 or 70% most movies have been falling their second weekends during the pandemic. So they got that going for them. It's fascinating though, fascinating though, without Disney or Warner Brothers in the mix yet for 2022, to see Sony and Paramount really thriving, while Universal is still doing very well thanks to 2021 holdover uh, Sing, uh, Sing 2, which is still doing business at the multiplex, even though it's available on digital. What a juggernaut and deserving. Great movie. Taron Edgerton sings in that. Well, oh, poor Taron Edgerton. Uh, over on, he sh maybe should be like, maybe I will do another Kingsman. <laughs> All right, over on stream, we'll talk about Kingsman when we get uh, a little bit later on because it's finally hit uh, digital. 
But over on streaming, where we like to start, of course, is Nielsen for the week of January 17th, where Ozark season four debuted, uh, putting the series at an incredibly strong number one, because remember, Nielsen counts all the seasons as one show. So you're not just seeing the season four traffic there, but people going back and watching the first three seasons as well. Only Disney Plus's The Book of Boba Fett was able to break Netflix's hold on original programming. Still at number five with episode four, right before the show got real good, like real good. And we'll see in the next few weeks as we get the next Nielsen charts if that boosts the numbers for Boba Fett as all, as it became Mandalorian 2.5. Uh, another side note, HBO, um, HBO Max really needs to get... Stop playing around and get their, their shows on this list. With such big streaming services participating, even though they might complain about it, it's very suspicious of any streaming service that does not participate and calls into question any headlines cherry-picked for promotional purposes. You can get all the third-party, like, small little companies you want to spotlight, but you really need to get on the Nielsen uh, charts. Uh, and HBO Max is a difficult position because they have both HBO and HBO Max, you know, and keep that in mind with any headlines about HBO Max originals, they're not comparing them to HBO originals, which, you know, there's a very blurry line between the two services. And I think that that actually from, from a PR perspective is working to HBO and HBO Max's benefit, but don't fall for it. All right, over on Movies on Nielsen, Encanto is still doing triple the viewing of the competition. Although last week, one of you brought this to my attention, thank you, it was covered in Deadline that Nielsen had a oopsie and didn't capture viewing for Eternals that week. And in fact, last week when it debuted on Disney+, Plus, it was number two, right behind Encanto, a strong number two. Uh, but this week, when it finally does officially make the list, uh, that, you know, Nielsen, you can't make oopsies like that if you want to continue to be, you know, the third party that everyone trusts. Uh, and you got to be a little more vocal when you do make an oopsie. But anyway, uh, Eternals this week, its numbers came back down to earth and it's in third place behind Amazon's Hotel Transylvania 4, which continues to give the streamer a rare movie on this list. As for Netflix's charts, for last week, they're just a week behind. The Tinder Swindler is still their number one movie, deservedly so. Fantastic. Uh, so great to see, you know, I think it's as good a documentary as The Tiger King. Uh, followed by the new release of Tall Girl 2. And over on TV, Shonda Rhimes continues her winning streak with her latest, Inventing Anna, debuting at number one. And on iTunes, here we go. The Kingsman hit Hulu and HBO Max this week, but it's also doing very well for digital purchase. It, uh, it even pulled the first film uh, into the top 10, and the second film is at number 12. Uh, the Kingsman was number one the past few days, but today, the lower price point of Ghostbusters Afterlife, which is available for rent, put that back at number one, and K The Kingsman is number two today. All right, as for this coming week, it's another very slow week before Warner Brothers enters the 2022 box office race with The Batman, not debuting day and date, thank you very much, on HBO Max. Do you have your tickets yet? So we'll see how that does uh, the weekend after next. But next weekend is going to be, there's a couple things that you're going to see coming out, but it's going to also be about Uncharted second weekend. What's that drop going to look like? And getting a big assist from the other studios by not releasing any competition. What is going to come out this coming weekend? We have Peter Dinklage's Cyrano, which I'm sure was hoping for more Oscar noms than just best costume design to help it at the box office. But at least it have some, has some BAFTA noms. Mostly also just like stuff like costume design, but it is up for best British picture. Uh, there's also Studio 666, a horror comedy starring the Foo Fighters. Dave Grohl dreamed up this movie, and it has a few respectable cameos like Jenna Ortega, Will Forte, and Lionel Richie, so we'll see how it does at the box office. There's nothing else to see, so maybe some people will go watch this. Uh, it seems like a streaming movie to me, but it's going to be in theaters. And on, and on streaming, Disney Plus brings back The Proud Family starting on Wednesday. This is a weekly release. That'll be interesting to see if The Proud Family will be appointment viewing for people. Uh, it's weird to, to do. I mean, What If was released that way for animation. But uh, let's see. I know The Proud Family has a very strong fan base. And they have a lot of cool guest stars lined up for that show. And then on Friday, Netflix has spin-off series Vikings Valhalla, another South Korea series, this time Juvenile Justice. And then last but certainly not least, Tyler Perry continues to build his relationship with Netflix after appearing in their big Oscar contender, Don't Look Up. He was quite good in that. 
Small role, but he did a really nice job. Perry has a drama debuting on Netflix later this year, but first up is another Medea movie, which hits this Friday and brings over Mrs. Brown from across the pond, where Brendan O'Carroll basically has done the same thing as Tyler Perry. And Tyler Perry has even commented on that. He's like, here's somebody who has basically my same career path over in the UK, so why not work together? I think that's awesome. A Medea Homecoming will also feature an LGBTQ storyline, as Perry says he hopes to modernize his marquee franchise and expand its audience with that additional storyline and also bringing over again Mrs. Brown. Uh, I'm curious, who's planning to watch a Medea Homecoming? I think it could qu do quite well on Netflix. Uh, and Medea Goes to Jail was still my, is still my favorite of the Medea movies, but I liked a Medea Halloween too. I thought that was a lot of fun, the first one. And that's this week's movie math. What have you been watching and what are you going to watch? Plus, what do you think of Uncharted and Tom Holland's box office success? And should he make that Fred Astaire movie? What would you advise him to do? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.